Christmas at Disney World is like no other time of year with their holiday decorations including 15 miles of garland, over 1,300 wreaths, 300,000, yes I said thousand, yards of ribbon and bows, and 8.5 million lights. It is a pretty magical time to visit the most magical place on earth. <laughs> Hey Pixies, welcome to today's video. I am so excited you're here and I cannot wait to chat all things Christmas at Disney World for 2024. And if you're new, this is the first video you've ever clicked on of mine, welcome. It's so nice to have you here. My name is Ashley and here on my channel, Pixie Dusted Mom, I am all about sharing tips and tricks for helping you to have a smoother Disney vacation, as well as simplifying family travel and sharing vlogs from our adventures along the way. So if that is something that you're into, I would love it if you would join my little Disney internet fan by clicking that red subscribe button below but if you're ready for all things Christmas at Disney go ahead grab your holiday drink of choice and let's jump into the video there is something so magical though about Disney World at Christmas time it is just the best of the best of all year long it is gorgeous and it's magical all season long but the resort at this time of year is just filled with extra cheer and jolly and merry and the lights and the glow it just it's just another level of Disney and quite honestly is my favorite time of year to visit Disney World. If I had to pick one time of year, it would be during the holiday season. So no matter if you're looking at this year and you've got a trip coming up, or if you're already thinking ahead and you're like, man, I don't know that we can swing this year, but we're already thinking next year. This is gonna be a great video for you to be able to kind of write down some of those things on your kind of Disney Christmas wish list, so to speak, and be able to start planning out that vacation and also the time of year, because all of the Christmas things aren't happening the entire kind of Christmas season. So while Magic Kingdom, usually by November 1st is starting to transform into the Christmas season and is feeling very festive like myself here, but not the whole resort is. The res Some of the holiday decorations don't get to the resorts until later on in the month of November. And then some of the festivities, like say over at Epcot, don't start until after Thanksgiving, like some of the more traditionalist. So depending on what you're looking for with your Disney holiday trip, we'll kind of dictate when you may want to schedule that. So we're gonna jump into a lot of stuff. So go ahead, grab your holiday drink, and let's start sipping and chatting. Planning a visit to Disney World during the busiest holiday season of the year can be a bit of a challenge. And honestly, with so many people wanting to experience the magic of Christmas at Disney, the parks can get really crowded really fast. But with a little planning and insider knowledge, Challenge, you can make the most of your trip. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do with any of this, whether it's for this year or next year, is to go ahead and get your accommodations secured. This is a great thing to do whether you're trying to book something kind of last-ish minute. Um, I know it's late October when this video is going live, so if you're wanting to do kind of a late-ish minute um, Disney trip for this Christmas, you can still make it happen, but you're gonna wanna go ahead and get those secured no matter if you're staying on property or off property because the closer you get, the more things are gonna fly because again, this is the most busy, time of year at Disney World. It is one of the peak holidays out of all of them. A lot of the big holidays draw in crowds, but there is nothing like Christmas crowds, especially Christmas week. So you've been forewarned, but let's go ahead and get that something on the books. And if you're wanting to plan for next year, I know a lot of people will give a Disney trip as a Christmas present. I know my husband and I have done that for our family before where we'll be like, hey, we're taking you guys to Disney and we'll do that sort of thing. And so if you're wanting to go ahead and do that and you're wanting to make that announcement, go ahead and start getting some things locked down while there aren't discounts and things available quite yet, that can always be added. But if you have a great Disney travel agent, then go ahead and reach out to them and that way they can help you start getting that planned and something on the books for next year. The second tip for this is to have a plan. With this being the busiest time of year, this is not time to go in without a plan and just kind of wing it, so to speak. This is not one of those situations. That's basically like going to the grocery store and needing to get all of your holiday like meal ingredients for Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner and you didn't make a list. So you're gonna forget something, you're gonna buy a bunch of junk that is probably gonna rot in the pantry, let's be honest, because you're gonna overbuy certain things. And it's just gonna be a lot of missed opportunity and you're gonna be running back to the busy store. And if you've ever went and you forgot something, you can picture this immediately. So to avoid that, definitely have a plan of what you want to do while you're at Disney World during Christmas. For me personally, this is one of those times of year when lightning lanes are an absolute must, especially for Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Those are the two parks. It is hands down 
not a question on whether we're going to be buying lightning lanes for those specific parks, especially if you're wanting to experience a lot of attractions, but you also wanna have time for all of the Christmas season exclusives too. I'll link my lightning lane guide down below because honestly, not to toot my own horn, I think it's some of the best $27 you'll spend and I'm not the only one who really likes it. Now, when it comes to actually planning your days at Disney World during the holiday season, be it November or December, you're gonna wanna prioritize those must-see attractions and shows for your family. And honestly, you're gonna need to consider skipping some of the less interesting ones that you are not wanting to do to save your family time. There is a ton to see and do on a normal day at Disney and Christmas offers even more. But I'm gonna be really honest with you guys, you're not gonna be able to do all of the normal Disney stuff and all of the Christmas stuff in one trip unless you have like a couple of weeks there which most of us unfortunately don't you're going for a maybe a weekend maybe a week so for the majority of travelers that's kind of the time frame you're gonna have and you're just not gonna be able to squeeze it all in I hate to just gotta burst that bubble right here and pretty early on in the video but I would rather you have realistic expectations than be disappointed by the lack of stuff that you're gonna be able to accomplish so you can do a lot with a plan, but you're not going to do everything. That's, that's not possible, okay? Just, that's not possible. And honestly, you're gonna wanna factor in time to be able to slow down, enjoy some of the holiday drinks and treats and just the atmosphere of being at Disney at Christmas. Because if you're rushing by all the time and you're not enjoying the atmosphere, you might as well have went in the summer. Like, it kind of, it really doesn't matter if you're just rushing off to rides. I don't really see the huge point in going during one of the busy seasons if you're not going to really take in where you are. So that would be another one of my tips is to make sure to factor in some downtime to relax and chill and enjoy those things. Now, when it comes to dining during the holiday season, if you are wanting a specific table service reservation, make the reservation as soon as you can. Like at that 60 day window, you're gonna wanna be making that reservation as soon as possible. Um, depending on when you're going, you may already be in that window. If you're planning a last minute trip, you're gonna wanna get those things going and try to work on grabbing those reservations because walk-up availability is not something that's super popular and isn't readily available during the Christmas season specifically. Now, if you're going more of the quick service route, you're wanting to be a little more budget friendly, you don't wanna take time out of your day to sit and do the whole dining thing, you're planning your breaks maybe a different way, and you don't want dining and your lunch or dinner or something like that to be your break, then be sure to learn how to mobile order. It is going to be your best friend for breezing through the parks and being able to get your dining a lot faster. So I have lots of other stuff for tips and tricks about that. If you're needing help, again, I will link my guides down below. It's got everything in it. But when it comes to mobile ordering, it's gonna move you through a bit faster. And also get out of the parks. So say you're at Magic Kingdom, hop on the monorail and go over to the Polynesian and eat at Captain Cook's. Go over to the Grand Floridian, maybe check out their gingerbread house, the decorations there, and we'll get more into some of the resort specific decorations and things that you can do outside the parks. But go over to Gasparilla Grill and dine there. And now I say those two because the contemporary quick service isn't very good. So I would not suggest going there. Um, if you're wanting a table service meal, get out of the parks, go to Steakhouse 71. That one is much, much better. <laughs> it is a table service restaurant, but it's a lot better quality of food. But if you're wanting to go to contemporary, that would be my suggestion is go there. It is so good. As far as being able to get out of the parks, it works great. Now, mobile ordering at these, and I'm gonna add in this little bonus tip, is nobody talks about this, and a lot of people don't know this, but it actually, if you're wanting to mobile order there, it says that you have to be staying at the resort to order there, but that's not true. If you continue on and you just click okay, and you keep going, it'll let you mobile order there every time, or at least it has us. So hopefully that tip doesn't fail you, but it's worked perfectly for us when we've not been staying at these resorts because we don't always stay at those resorts. They're lovely, but we're not always there. And so sometimes we like to visit, grab food, and a lot of people don't talk about that, but you actually can. Another favorite of ours, if we wanna get out of the park to eat, Animal Kingdom has some really great in-park food, but if you're wanting a break from the crowds, you're just wanting to get out, 
go out, take the bus to Animal Kingdom Lodge and either go to Jumbo House and go to Boma. You, that is a buffet and it is a table service. So you would need a reservation for that potentially. They're more likely to have a possible walk-up availability in the middle of the day. So you might could do that. But another option is to also go over to Kadani Village, Animal Kingdom Lodge Kadani, and eat at Sanaa for lunch as well. So a couple of different places. Those are so incredibly delicious. Like if you're wanting to get out and eat there, that is a great one. If you're wanting to get out of say Hollywood Studios or Epcot, take the Skyliner over to Riviera. Either Primo Piatto, Primo Piatta or Bar Riva at the Riviera are chef's kiss so good you do not have to be staying at any of these resorts to dine there you can go in order your food sit down and enjoy it so so good go seriously to Riviera and get the grilled chicken sandwich Dunkin' in the tomato basil soup and thank me later because it is so incredibly good but if you are wanting something outside of the parks it does kind of take some time away but it's a great way to relax it's a great way to get out of the crowds and just also have some different options because Sometimes the park food's good and then sometimes the park food's not so good. So it's actually nice to get out. One of the most iconic Christmas events at Disney World is Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Now this is a special event and it takes place on select nights in November and December and it features festive decorations, holiday treats, and exclusive character meet and greets that you can't get during the day during regular park hours. So you can also enjoy the Once Upon a Time Parade during this which features a lot of your Disney characters in their holiday attire but i will say these parties are insanely popular as i'm filming this only the first night is sold out but it will sell out incredibly like i said these are very popular events and the tickets will go quickly so be sure if that's something you're wanting to add on to your christmas 2024 trip go ahead and get them now or once party tickets are released kind of if you're looking for that Christmas 2025 look at ticket prices for this year for the time frame that you're thinking of going kind of get that number in your head now um, obviously there is this lovely thing right now called inflation that we've always dealt with but it seems a little worse now than any other time but it, you may have to factor in a little bit more money for next year's ticket we'll see but it's one of those things that gives you kind of a good baseline for saving and having a savings goal for maybe next Christmas if you are wanting to add that on because the tickets can get a little pricey. Now a lot of those Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party things are party exclusives. They're exclusive for a reason. You're not going to get those during regular park hours. Now if you're going after the parties have ended, so this year I believe it will be December 21st through December 30th, they'll have the Once Upon a Christmas Parade that is usually a party exclusive. It'll also be featured during the daytime. So you'll need to check park hours for that as it gets a little bit closer to time. But in years past they have always included that. They've not officially made that announcement this year, but I would be on the lookout for that because that's usually a traditional thing that Disney does every year. They did it last year. So be on the lookout for that this year and that way you can see the parade. It is absolutely magical and perfect if you can watch it on um, Main Street. A lot of times they'll include some snow during that time. So it just depends on the day, but it is seriously absolutely incredible. While we're talking about Magic Kingdom though, you can do this all year long, but especially during Christmas time, it's actually extra special. But if you'll go over to Liberty Square, you can go to the Ye Old Christmas Shop. And in there, you will actually be able to find a little mailbox and paper and pins and your kids or you can write letters to Santa and actually be able to put them in the mailbox. It's just a really cute little experience. In the Christmas shop, just feels like extra special. Like I think it's so cute. There's actually a table outside, out front. There's a sleigh and so you could go out and maybe at the table if no one's sitting there have a seat write out your letters to santa from the kids if you do that sort of thing if you are into santa it is a really really cute thing doesn't cost anything and a lot of people don't even know this exists because they just breeze right past it so it's kind of tucked over in the corner you may have to ask a cast member hey where's the letters to santa station like is there a spot um, and they will show you exactly where it's at but it's super cute and kind of secret and then lastly and this is everywhere at disney world but be sure to check the menus at some of the different restaurants specifically the quick service restaurants more so they are all the time having either special treats or special food food items or drinks and things that you can have. Some of them are party specific, so they are specific to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party and they're only available during those hours. And then some of them over at Hollywood Studios are only available during Jollywood, um, the holiday party that they have over there, which we'll get into that in a minute. But 
for those that are wanting like specialty treats you don't want the normal stuff that they have all year long like you're into trying the different stuff like okay I've, I've went in the summertime I know what they have like I want something different this is a great time to check that out so be sure to look at the menus kind of peruse them a little bit and see what they have and usually Disney Parks blog will release a full like list of all of the foods that are coming to like the whole resort that's not out yet as I'm filming this but once it is available I'll have it linked down below so if you're watching this video a little later you can head on down to the description box and I'll have that linked there as well so you can check it out honestly though even without going to these special parties and special ticketed events you can stroll through the parks surrounded by the most festive decorations from towering Christmas trees to sparkling snowflakes and garlands and each park is so uniquely decorated to fit its theme and in true Disney fashion it is a completely immersive experience even with the Christmas decorations so you're gonna want to factor in some time to just like relax and just enjoy don't forget to look around don't be so worried about getting to that lightning lane or getting to the reservation or rushing off to this or that that you don't soak that in because it is so special it's so unique and part of the joy of going at Christmas time is all the extra festive decorations and the jolly and everything so I clearly am a Christmas nut I love Christmas but I am all for just soaking it in and getting in all of the holly jolly fun you can to piggyback though off of the Christmas parties at Magic Kingdom so for us when we're going during the holiday season and there are Christmas parties going on I will actually intentionally plan our Magic Kingdom days for party days so this is one of those things you're gonna want to check park hours if you're not going to the Christmas party check the park hours so that you can know what the schedule is gonna look like and if the park is closing at 6 p.m. because that's gonna be a rude surprise if you rock up and you didn't realize it was closing and then they start kicking you out and you're like man you've got your family hyped for fireworks and you thought this whole evening was gonna go very very different so be sure to check park hours but for us we love doing that because most of the crowds they want that full day at Magic Kingdom they want to include the fireworks. They want to see the parks at the at nighttime and things like that. So they will intentionally skip going on a party day when the park is going to close at 6 p.m. But honestly, the crowds, because of that, are significantly lower on those days versus other holidays. So this is one of our favorite ways. Sometimes you can go in and you don't need lightning lanes. I personally still utilize them because I want to be able to move through any of the attractions faster and still be able to get in the Christmas stuff. So personally, I would still purchase those. And I like, that's my strategy is I do that. So I'm just sharing kind of what my family does as a mom of a three and a five year old. We, we want to move through the lines as fast as possible. So while some of the weights are lower, some of the more popular attractions like your Jungle Cruise or at that time of year, usually Jingle Cruise, it gets a special Christmas overlay for those rides. Peter Pan's Flight, a lot of the mountains, things like that, those are going to have higher weights, averaging usually around 45 minutes. And so if I can take and I can knock that 45 down to maybe 10 or 15 and be able to move on and do something else in my day, I'm all for it. So that really does help. And so I would suggest still buying lightning lanes on those days, but check your park hours, check your park hours. Moral of the story is check your park hours. <laughs> Another special event that they have at Disney World is the Jollywood Nights over at Hollywood Studios. And while this didn't get the best glowing reviews last year, Disney has taken note and thankfully they've added in some more exclusive entertainment, kind of character meet and greets, plus Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, which is a really fun projection show that they do on the Chinese theater there at the end of the street. But that seems to be used to, it was they did it all the time but this time it seems to be a party exclusive they've not said that it's going to be offered outside of those so that'll be interesting to see but we actually went to Jollywood Nights last year we have tickets this year and I'm very curious to see so I will be vlogging that if you want to see that definitely click the subscribe button that way you can bell notification and it'll, it'll notify you when that vlog goes up if you're curious about seeing that none of the Jollywood nights are sold out so far like that if that tells you anything about how unpopular it was last year um so I'm very curious to see how that goes um I love Hollywood Studios at Christmas and I that's the reason I bought the tickets but I'm I'm going in very very skeptical about whether it's going to be worth it or not so we'll see about that but we'll we'll report back once we find out <laughs> 
Now, obviously, Jollywood Nights is going to have its own special food and beverage list, which actually I will link below in the description box because Disney has all of that released. And so half the fun of Disney is the snacks, right? If Jollywood Nights doesn't quite sound like your thing or you just aren't interested in splurging for extra ticket prices on top of already paying to go during the daytime, then you're going to be very happy to know that there are new Christmas offerings coming to Hollywood Studios for Christmas 2024 and two of my favorites are returning and I'm so excited about it. Hollywood Studios is my favorite park for atmosphere just in general. The like Sunset Boulevard area is just, is, is a vibe. But during Christmas time, it is even more of a vibe and my favorite it. Honestly, it is so, so good, but it will be all decked out with all of the Christmas lights. They'll have Snope going and then a fun projection show on the Hollywood Tower Hotel. Honestly, I could just live there. And then my other favorite thing that is returning to Hollywood Studios this year is the Frozen Ever After sing-along. The Frozen sing-along show is getting the holiday ending back. I'm so excited. So they do the whole regular show that you're used to if you've ever seen that during the year, but then they have this extra like 15 or 20 minute long ending that they add onto it and it's a Christmas ending and it is so good and it honestly makes me cry every single time when we do watch that. It is so, so good. So definitely one of those things you want to check out that will begin back on November 12th. So be sure if you're going after November 12th, you gotta go see the Frozen sing-along. It is so cute. Like even if I didn't have my little girls, I would want to go see it. I'd probably still sit there and cry nonetheless, but it is so, so cute. So you definitely need to check it out. Now for 2024, they're gonna be adding in some different new entertainment options here. They're gonna be adding the Juggling Elves, which sounds interesting. Um, a holiday spirit band, so think kind of brass band kind of vibes, which I feel like fits for Hollywood Studios. And then they're also gonna have the Seasons Jukebox, which is supposed to be kind of a collegiate, preppy, peppy kind of band thing going on. So marching band style. So that'll be interesting. The one that I'm most excited about is the Holiday Spirit Band. That just, it really sounds like Hollywood Studios vibes with the brass band and like the whole vibe and era. And I'm like, I just, I'm here for it. So I'm very excited to see that one. But the others will be very interesting to check out too. But what really makes Disney World's Christmas celebration so special is just being there together and making memories as a family. Honestly, one of my favorite Disney Christmas memories is standing on Main Street, holding my girls and watching the fireworks at the Christmas party. Yes, we were shoulder to shoulder, but honestly, it was the most magical thing hearing my girls' reactions to the fireworks and just the excitement of everyone else standing around us and watching the fireworks with us and just hearing everyone else having their own unique special moment. Like, I'm just gonna cry thinking about it, but I just, I love that. And it wasn't something super extravagant. It wasn't anything like it, I just, it wasn't just this super special like oh my gosh I'd worked so hard to like meticulously plan this one little moment it just happened now this isn't to say that every second of your vacation is going to be perfect and blissful and magical because your kids are probably gonna have a meltdown you're gonna have big feelings somebody's gonna be hangry like it's gonna happen but the little moments like that are the ones that you're gonna remember and you're gonna look back on and it'll be the silliest little things that weeks from your vacation, your kids are gonna be like, hey mommy, remember when we blah, 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 blah. And you're gonna be like, you remember that? Like, and it's gonna be so interesting to hear what their special little memories are. So super sweet. I'm gonna go off on a tangent and a rant, but I promise you magic is there. You just, you gotta look for it. Your family, your family is the magic. Moving on though to the last big Christmas event at Disney and that is the Festival of Holidays at Epcot. Now the one thing to note about this is while a lot of the other Christmas festivity stuff starts earlier in November, this doesn't start until after Thanksgiving. So if you're a traditionalist, you're probably like, yay, finally, some more in the gets it. <laughs> the rest of us are like, just started November 1st. <laughs> so that would be a lot easier. I would love that. It would be so nice because then you could do like all the things earlier on. But either way, I digress. The Festival of the Holidays at Epcot. <laughs> this is going to be running between November 29th through December 30th for 2024. So it is a super short time frame, honestly, but it is a really, really cute festival. 
here you're gonna hear stories from Santas all around the world talking about Christmas from their country, which is really, really cool, especially if you love like hearing and understanding and learning more about other countries and their traditions. It's really, really cool. You're also gonna have lots of yummy holiday inspired food and drinks. So think lots of peppermint, gingerbread, those types of things. And then you also are gonna have things from different countries. So obviously in America, you're gonna have your turkey, your stuffing, your mashed potatoes, which I think they're really good. Like I'm not expecting some five star quality Michelin star little meal there, but it is actually, I think it's quite good. The cookies, not so much, but the, the little holiday meal is good, but you're gonna get those for every country. So whatever meal is like their thing, you know, have everybody's family, like favorite meal is so different. You kind of get that at Epcot during the holidays all year long, honestly, but especially at the holidays, it just, it's extra fun kind of trying different countries, little special holiday treats. So you can go around and do that. And then the crown jewel of Epcot's Festival of the Holidays is the Candlelight Processional. We got to see it and actually sit and watch it for the first time last year. And it was incredible, you guys. It is beautiful, it is moving, like the choir singing, you've got the narrators telling the story of the birth of Jesus. And I'll link the below the list of narrators that they're gonna have. Um, this is one of those things though, it is incredibly popular. Locals and people that are out of state make this a thing that they go and visit so the lines can get extremely long if you have a narrator um, especially some of the more popular celebrity narrators you're gonna want to do the special dining package the candlelight dinner package that they have I would highly suggest that because seriously the lines get insanely long unless you're like us and you end up on a very like rainy night then you're gonna want to do that and especially for us even on the night last year it was incredibly rainy so we weren't able to stay through the whole thing as so we were freezing and we were soaked. It was a very random little blip in the warm Florida weather in December where it was pouring rain and it was chilly and windy and it, we were just like, I just, I, 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 this is beautiful, but I just, I can't make it anymore. So we ended up having to dip. But if we would have had the dinner package, we would have been seated closer to the stage, which is under a large awning, kind of like an amphitheater, but the awning only goes so far. So for those of you that have that, your heart set on it, you're like, come wind or rain or hell or high water, I am watching this show. Just get the dinner package promise you it's gonna be well worth the money spent whether it's raining whether it's busy it's the long lines whatever that looks like get the dinner package outside of special events that they have animal kingdom is kind of the like least christmasy of them all but for 2024 they actually are getting some new fun things so i think they're getting a little tlc love because like a lot of people don't go to animal kingdom for christmas cheer so i think disney is trying to like sprinkle that in here so they're adding in actually a santa meet and greet this is also going to start on november 12th and you're going to meet him over at restaurant asaurus he's going to be there november 12th through no december 24th obviously he has to leave on christmas eve the big guy's got to deliver her presents you know so he's only gonna be there that long but I'm curious to see if they have a virtual queue for this or if it's just a standard go get in line kind of cute, traditional you stand in a line kind of thing um, if I find out any information about that I will pin a comment down below and that way you guys can know about that but it sounds very interesting, but I'm glad to see that they're kind of adding in some of that. Um, you are also going to have Mickey and Minnie getting in on the kind of festive celebration, and they're going to get some different little Christmas outfits. So if you are going over to the Adventurer's Outpost to meet Mickey and Minnie, they are going to have a little bit more festive attire this year, which is pretty cute and cool. Love that. They're usually in their safari gear, but they're getting ready for the holidays too. So on November 12th, that will also start. And then last but not least, the Merry Menagerie. I think I'm, I hope Hope I'm saying that right is returning I have never had the privilege of seeing these things but they look beautiful and everybody that sees them they're like they're just gorgeous in person so these special little puppets that will come out kind of in the Discovery Island area and say hello and they're very very festive and they just look really cute so I'm hoping we'll be able to bump into these cute little guys on our Disney Christmas trip because they sound awesome now let's move on to Disney Christmas outside of the park. So you may wanna plan a resort day, you may not wanna be in the parks all the time, or you just may not wanna to go to the parks at all. So there are definitely lots of Christmas activities that you can have outside of the park, so let's jump into that. And I'm gonna start with Disney Springs because honestly, everybody talks about the resorts and all these things, and we're gonna to get to that 
but Disney Springs is really special and does not get the love it deserves. Honestly, we love it at Christmas time. And so I think you should definitely go over and check it out. It's a great way to go over, have a nice little Christmas dinner, do some sort of kind of family evening. And it is a ton of fun. For the things there that we personally love, you're gonna be able to meet Santa Claus, they're gonna have special food and beverage options, and also gonna have Snope in the town center. There's gonna be a Christmas tree stroll, and obviously you can do some Christmas shopping while you're there, because there's tons and tons of stores. But if you don't want to do that, and you just wanna to stick to the free Christmas activities, you can totally do that. You can go to Disney Springs, that's free. You can meet Santa, that's also free. You can go and do the Christmas tree stroll, completely free. And if you do that, they actually have a little scavenger hunt you get like a button or something they have a different little thing each year but if you go and you find out where it's at you can go through and do like a little scavenger hunt of seeing all the trees and then you can go back and get your little price which is pretty cute so you can do that with your kids and like have like a little fun little thing that you can do again that is completely free you don't have to pay for that it's not like the little scavenger hunts that they have over at Epcot those are free there are all of the little like lights and all the fun things that you can do that are absolutely free. Like you don't have to pay for any of that. So it's really nice. You can see the snow and it is so festive. Now, one thing I will mention about the Snope in the town center is that it's not running constantly. It is on a little schedule. So it's usually at sunset, they'll start it and then it runs every like 20 or 30 minutes. So it definitely, if you don't haven't looked at a schedule to know when that's going to happen, ask a cast member when you get there and they will be able to kind of let you know in a rough estimate of a time frame when that is going to happen and it's really cute really fun they're blasting Christmas music and there's just snow everywhere and everybody is so excited so you can definitely kind of freeze and grab some cute little family photos during that I, we absolutely love it so it's really good and then if you're looking for a little inexpensive holiday dinner Earl of Sandwich. We love going there. We've been going there for the last few years. It's more of a budget friendly option, which is really nice, especially at Disney when everything is so expensive. But we love to go there. They have two holiday sandwiches. They have a holiday ham and a holiday turkey. The holiday turkey is my personal favorite, minus the cranberry sauce. I'm not team cranberry sauce. I don't know about you guys. It's not my jam, but I get it without that. And it is like a holiday meal on a bun. It's not exquisite. Like I'm not trying to hype this up like it's something super fancy but it just feels and tastes like Christmas. So if you're wanting the taste of Christmas for like seven or eight bucks, it is really good. So definitely check that out over at Earl of Sandwich at Disney Springs. And then lastly, when it comes to meeting the big guy himself, Mr. Santa Claus here at Disney Springs. In the years past, I'm just going off of what they've done the last few years, they will have a virtual queue. So this is not one of those you can just show up and go to it kind of thing. And you do have to be close to or at Disney Springs to join the virtual queue. So you can't be on the bus to on your way there necessarily and join. You can't be at your resort. You can't be at a theme park and then come over. You're gonna have to be at Disney Springs to do it. And they're gonna do it like other virtual queues and they have drops different times of the day. So you can join in that way. So that is one thing to note. You're gonna want to maybe grab that virtual queue spot before you get your kids hyped up that they're gonna meet Santa Claus and do that whole thing. If your kids are really excited for that, it would be very, be very sad to have them like expectation of we're meeting Santa Claus and then that not happen. So that is quite disappointing because they do go very fast. I tried last year and I blinked and it was gone. So it was one of those, be sure to know, um, especially depending on the time of day, closer to the evening, it's gonna be a lot trickier to get into that virtual queue, which is when we were there, maybe a little earlier on, it's a little bit easier to jump into that virtual queue than in the evening time. And of course, it would not be Christmas at Disney if we didn't talk about the resorts, because they have their own special magic. They're beautiful all year long, but each one gets their own unique Christmas decorations. And again, in true Disney fashion, it is themed to the resort that you're at. So if you're at the Poly Nation, it's very tropical. If you're a Grand Floridian, it has that old school feel. If you're over at Beach Club, you're thinking beach. If you're at Art of Animation, it's like all the right colors, all the characters. It's like all the Pixar. It is just so cute. And literally every resort gets this treatment. A lot of love gets shown to the monorail resorts specifically because they are some of the most popular. But honestly, 
no matter what resort you're gonna be staying at, Disney is going to have it decked out to the nines. But it's just beautiful and so nicely done no matter where you're staying, all the way from value to deluxe. So even if you don't wanna maybe do the monorail crawl thing, the stereotypical Christmas crawl and do it that way, you could do the Skyliner and head over. Pop Century has some really cute decorations and also has a playground. So if you're like us and you have little kids, the Caribbean Beach Resort has some cute tropical decorations. It's quite festive. They also have a playground. And um, over at Art of Animation. It's very Pixar and themed. You can walk around and see the cars and the Lion King and Little Mermaid and all that stuff going on. Their lobby is very beautifully decorated as well. And again, they also have a playground. So I'm just saying like I'm a mom of little. So if you're wanting to check out those things or just do something different where it's not so crowded and it's not so busy, that is some great ways to do that. Um, Riviera does decorate for Christmas, but it's not quite as extravagant. They don't have a huge like grand lobby like some of the other deluxe resorts do. So that one's a little less. But some of our favorites personally to visit are obviously Grand Floridian Polynesian. Those are some great ones. We talked about that earlier, but then also Beach Club is absolutely amazing. You can pop over to Beaches and Cream, be able to grab a little treat, whether it's from the walk-up window or if you can get a reservation there. And then Art of Animation is one of my kids' favorites as well to visit during the holiday season all the lights, all of the, the different decorations and the characters on the trees. It's just, it's super special. Oh, an honorable mention goes to probably the most Christmassy resort, honestly, of them all for a lot of people, and that is Wilderness Lodge. It is amazing. They have this gigantic, gigantic tree in the lobby. It is gorgeous, as well as they also have the fireplace. So it just has this really cozy cabin-y feel. So if that's what you're looking for and you feel like you want that, kind of Christmassy traditional kind of feel, that is a great resort to go to. But here's the thing, if you go there, you've gotta do yourself a favor and go eat at Geyser Point. It is so good. Hands down, delicious. It's out, it's out by the water. They've got low tables for you and the kids to like play and like be able to see stuff. It is, it's so good, like seriously, so good. Do yourself a favor. It's the best restaurant at Wilderness Lodge, hands down. Don't at me, because you know it's true. <laughs> And then last but not least for Christmas at the resorts, it would honestly be a Christmas like travesty if I didn't mention this, but you've got to head over to Fort Wilderness and you need to either book a sleigh ride or go and see if you can get on the wait list. It is absolutely fun to go through, you're riding through in a Christmas sleigh. It's got all the decorations on it. You got lights on it. The horses have jingle bells and then they're just like trotting through the little kind of campground and cabins and it is so sweet so many decorations like people there go all out like Fort Wilderness is like a whole other Disney vibe and people there it's just it's amazing so if you've not been you really need to make a visit over there Trails End is the quick services over there too and it is delicious they have even some family style meals that you can get so that it makes it a little bit more affordable and we've not had a bad thing from there so if you're wanting to kind of do something outside of the parks maybe you are going to Disney Magic Kingdom on a party day and you're having to leave at say 6 p.m. You could hop on the boat, go over to Fort Wilderness, do the sleigh ride, maybe watch the fireworks, gonna go back and watch the fireworks kind of thing at Magic Kingdom at the exit and then be able to hop on the bus and dip out at 10 o'clock when they're over. So just a few ideas, but I will have a link below so you can go and check out the page to actually book the reservations for these sleigh rides. But we did one of those and it is absolutely magical. So cute. And if you actually go earlier in the day, this is a side side note. I'm just thinking of all these tips and I gotta share them with you. But when it comes to going, if you go before 5 p.m., they actually have pony rides there. My girls love them. They're very inexpensive, but you can actually ride one of Cinderella's ponies. The little white ponies that pulls the carriage when, say, a bride gets married at Disney World. It is so cute, so magical. So if you go before 5 p.m., you can check them out and actually ride one of Cinderella's ponies. Now, one note, thing to note is they do have to be over three years old and there is a height requirement. I will pop that information up here because I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but there are stipulations to this. Like, unfortunately we can't ride Cinderella's pony. Like I'm never gonna get pulled in the carriage and I'm never gonna be able to ride the pony cause I'm too tall and I weigh too much. But definitely this is the information to know if you wanna get your kid on Cinderella's pony. <laughs> But that's gonna do it for Christmas at Disney World for 2024. I'm so excited that you've been here. You hung around with me. Thank you so much for watching. Here on my channel, we have what we call a secret end of the video club. So now that you've made it this far, 
you're actually an honorary member, so you can give yourself a little round of applause, maybe refill your holiday drink of choice there, but congratulations, welcome to the club. That also means you do have to answer my question though. I would love to know what your favorite Disney Christmas memory is. If you've gone during the holiday season and you have a sweet memory, I would love to hear it. I'm sure some other people would love to. It would give some good ideas, maybe things to do. So you can go ahead, drop that in the comment section, leave it with some Christmassy emojis. That way we all know you're part of the secret club that nobody else knows about. But if you haven't though been and you're looking forward to Christmas or you're dreaming of it, it's on your bucket list, I would love to hear what you are, what's on your bucket list. What's like one of those special things at Disney that you've heard about or you've seen in videos that you're like, I wanna go to Disney at Christmas and I want to do this. But thank you again so much for being here. If you're wanting more Christmas at Disney Magic, you can check out this playlist right over here. Lots of vlogs and tips from past. If you're going to the Christmas party, all that stuff is in this playlist, so I've got you covered. But thanks again for watching. Bye.